In this video, we're going to discuss the conditions necessary for a conducting channel or the inversion layer to form. When the gate is grounded so that no channel is induced, the field effect transistor consists of two p-n junctions between the source and the substrate and the drain and the substrate. These back-to-back -back diodes prevent current from flowing between the drain and source even when a source voltage exists between them. The effective resistance between the drain and the gate under these conditions is on the order of 10 to the 12th ohms. Now, consider the effect of applying a positive voltage to the gate while leaving the drain and the source grounded. As we've already mentioned, due to the insulating layer, no current flows into the gate. The positive voltage repels the p-type carriers beneath the gate and starts to draw electrons in from the heavily doped source and drain regions. The voltage at the gate is the voltage above ground or the or relative to ground. Since the source is also grounded, the gate voltage is also the voltage at the gate relative to the source. And as we'll see, it's convenient to describe or to refer to the voltage at the gate as VGS. Continuing to increase the gate voltage continues to attract more electrons until the inversion layer is formed. The minimum volt value of VGS that forms a conducting channel is referred to as the threshold voltage. V sub, capital V sub lowercase t, we're going to refer to that as the threshold voltage. Thus, VGS must be greater than V sub t for the transistor to conduct. Although the mechanisms are different, this is analogous to the case in diodes where, similarly, a minimal voltage was necessary to move the diode into a conducting state. Now, V sub T is a function of transistor design and is typically on the order of about 0.3 volts to 1 volt. Note that V sub T, the threshold voltage, is different than capital V sub capital T um, the thermal voltage, thermal voltage that we ran into when we were studying the PN junction. Continuing to increase VGS, the voltage here at the gate relative to the source, creates what we're going to refer to as the overdrive voltage, VOV. VOV then is defined as VGS minus V sub T. It is the amount that VGS exceeds the threshold voltage. For VGS less than V sub T, the threshold voltage. So when the gate voltage is less than that threshold voltage, the transistor does not conduct. As we'll see, the overdrive voltage plays a central role in describing the current voltage relationship of the transistor. So one for your notes is then the overdrive voltage, VOV, is equal to the gate voltage VGS minus that threshold voltage necessary to form the, uh, the channel. Now, with the drain and the source, or the source and the drain still grounded, the channel underneath the gate is the same thickness the entire length. The amount of charge contained in that channel, then, can be expressed as Q is equal to the capacitance, what we're going to refer to as COX here, which is known as the oxide capacitance, and it's a function or it's a, it's a per area measure. So charge, the amount of electrons, or the number of electrons, the amount of charge in the inversion layer is equal to this um, oxide capacitance term times the width times the length or the surface area of the gate times the overdrive voltage where COX, this oxide capacitance, is equal to epsilon of the uh, oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide. And the permittivity of the oxide is just is equal to 3.9 times the permittivity of free space. So that's 3.9 times the permittivity of free space gives us that value there. 
then we can calculate the actual conduct or capacitance for the gate is equal to the charge in that layer divided by the overdrive voltage or simply COX times the width times the length. So, for example, if the thickness of the oxide TOX is, say, 4 nanometers, and the width of the gate is equal to 0.72 microns, and the length of the gate is equal to 0.18 microns, then the oxide capacitance, COX, is equal to um, 3.45 times 10 to the minus 11th, this number right there, divided by the thickness, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 9th. So again, COX, COX, the oxide capacitance per area, is equal to the permittivity of the oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide. So there's the permittivity of the oxide divided by the thickness of the oxide. Get your calculator out, and that gives us 8.6 times 10 to the minus third. Note the units, farads per meter squared. Now, meters are awfully big units to be calculating this kind of, uh, at this kind of scale, but nonetheless, we can go ahead and use those and then calculate the actual capacitance is equal to um, COX, which we just calculated to be 8.6 times 10 to the minus third. So COX times the width, which is 0.72 times 10 to the minus sixth, times the length, which is 0.18 times 10 to the minus sixth. And again, you get your calculators out on that. That is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 15th farads, or 1.1 uh, femto farads. So 10 to the minus 15th is femto, or 1.1 femto farads would be the capacitance under the gate or due to the insulated gate of that transistor.